Hello, Laverne here, and thank you for joining me. May this video be a blessing to you, and may it honor and glorify God in His kingdom. In this video, I'm going to be discussing a passage that I don't think gets enough attention, not nearly enough attention, because it has to do with our very salvation. And yet, most Christians like to simply pass over this. They gloss over it, and they don't give it the attention that it really needs. And the passage I'm referring to is found in three of the Gospels, the first three, Matthew, Mark, and Luke, all have a very similar passage. It's talking about the same story. So it is significant in that three of the four deal with this story of Christ. Now, it has to do with little children and who it is that's going to enter the kingdom of heaven. So it's giving clear instructions as to what we must do, what we must be like if we are going to enter the kingdom of heaven. And if we are not like this, then we are simply not going to enter. So I think it would behoove us to learn or to, to examine ourselves and find out if we are as the description that Jesus is giving us. Now, I'm going to read the story that is found in Matthew, and it begins in chapter 18. Now, I'm going to read from uh, the King James Version first, and then from the New Living Translation, uh, beginning with verse 1. At the same time came the disciples unto Jesus, saying, Who is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven? And Jesus called a little child unto him, and set him in the midst of them, and said, Verily I say unto you, except ye be converted, and become as little children, ye shall not enter into the kingdom of heaven. Whosoever therefore shall humble himself as this little child, the same is greatest in the kingdom of heaven. Alright, now I'm going to read from the New Living Translation. Just because it's, uh, uh, well... There's a lot of people that have a hard time with the King James Version. So for that reason, I'm going to read from the New Living Translation. Again, Matthew 18. Uh, I'm going to begin with verse 3. Then he said, I tell you the truth. Unless you turn from your sins and become like little children, you will never get into the kingdom of heaven. So anyone who becomes as humble as his little child is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven. And anyone who welcomes a little child like this on my behalf is welcoming me. But if you cause one of these little ones who trusted me to fall into sin, it would be better for you to have a large millstone tied around your neck and be drowned in the depths of the sea. What sorrow awaits the world because it tempts people to sin. Now here it's not just talking about children. It's, he simply says, what sorrow awaits the world because it tempts people to sin. Temptations are inevitable, but what sorrow awaits the person who does the tempting? So if your hand or foot causes you to sin, cut it off and throw it away. It's better to enter eternal life with only one hand or one foot than to be thrown into eternal fire with both of your hands and feet. And if your eye causes you to sin, gouge it out and throw it away. It's better to enter eternal life with only one eye than to have two eyes and be thrown into the fire of hell. Beware that you don't look down on any of these little ones, for I tell you that in heaven their angels are always in the presence of my heavenly Father. Now, getting back to what does it mean to be like a little one? Because our salvation is dependent upon it. Because only those people who are like little children are going to enter the kingdom. Do you not think it's important then to ensure that we know what Jesus was talking about when he says this? If you have a misunderstanding of what it means to be a little child, to be like a little one, then the chances are you are on the wrong path. If you are going to ensure, if you, are going, if you want to know for sure if you are on the right path, the narrow path, then you need to know whether or not you are like a little child. Because if you aren't, according to Jesus, you are not going to enter the kingdom. This is very much like other passages that I've talked about that many people want to sweep under the carpet. 
And so I'm going to include a link to a video I did quite some time ago, actually. I think it was in my first few months of making videos on YouTube. And it has to do with those people who like to cut passages out of the Bible. They cherry-pick passages and in essence what they do is they condense the Bible not down into 66 books such as the Protestant Bible but they in reality condense it down to only a few pages. There are many people who preach a gospel that is watered down. It's nothing more than a straw gospel and it is because they preach only from a few select passages and they disregard everything else. Also there are those people who simply take passages out of context. They don't read what's before it or after it. They don't consider who is being talked to. They don't consider when it's being talked about and so on. And so this is why I stress the importance of ensuring that you are reading scripture in context. Ensure that you are not sweeping passages under the rug. And so this is why I'm bringing forth this passage in this video to talk about. I would sincerely like to know what your thoughts are on uh, being like little children. If we are to be like little children, how do we know if we are, if we have a misunderstanding of what Jesus means by this? So I'm asking this of you, and at a later date, sometime in the near future, I'll make a video uh, explaining what I believe it means. But I would first like to hear your honest thoughts on this. Now, I am going to give uh, uh, a bit more information uh, from how I feel about it. Uh, and to explain that, I'm going to actually go to um, Luke 13, I think it is, or no, I'm sorry, John 13. John 13, I'm going to read from verse 33. Little children, yet a little while I am with you. Ye shall seek me, and as I said unto the Jews, whither I go, ye cannot come. So now I say to you. Now this is Jesus talking to his disciples, and he refers to them as little children. This is very significant. It's actually very important to understanding what he was talking about uh, when he was referring to only little children are going to enter the kingdom. When Jesus is referring to his disciples as little children, it's important to, to understand that he does not call them apostles in the book of John. Because in the first three Gospels, in Matthew, Mark, and Luke, there comes a point when Jesus no longer refers to them as the disciples, but refers to them as apostles. Well, in the book of John, he doesn't do this. He doesn't refer them, he doesn't refer to them as apostles. We don't see the word apostle mentioned in the book of John. However, Jesus does refer to, to them as little children. And this is why I'm going to throw this out to you that when he's referring to little children, that this is actually referring to mature disciples of Christ. In, in other words, mature Christians uh, coming after the resurrection when the church is born. So because the church isn't born yet, he's referring to his followers as these little children. But it's actually referring to mature disciples. And we need to keep this in mind when we are looking at uh, who are little children, that they must be humble like little children. And there are other passages. This is why I'm asking you to do a bit of research. Really look into this. Look up the different passages where you see the words little child or little children. Find out what Jesus really means when he's referring to this. It's important to your salvation and to anyone that you are preaching the gospel to. For there are a lot of people preaching straw gospels and watered down gospels and it's a real problem because there's a good chance that many of these people are like the blind leading the blind that they are leading people into damnation into hell while 
they have the belief that they are leading them, leading them to the kingdom of God. All right, I'm just going to leave it at that. I'm sure you, anyone who's watched a, a good number of my videos or even a few, will know that I do not believe in once saved, always saved, or eternal salvation. That the point of eternal salvation does not begin with simply saying a sinner's prayer or confessing that you believe in Christ. There are so many passages in the Bible that contradict this, that it is not by faith alone. And I believe this is one other passage that does that. This passage from Matthew 18. We must be like little children or we do not enter the kingdom of heaven. So, what does that mean to you? Alright, as always, I look forward to comments and messages. Until next time, peace and blessings.